homoclossus, homosacer, hominis aperti, challenges for group analysis in 21st century. Good morning, dear colleagues. Good morning, dear Haim, Sue, and Bobby. Thank you very much for the invitation for this special study day, which celebra celebrates the 40th anniversary of Folk's Lecture. The homoclosis, the closet of individual. According to Moscovici, the individual was the most important creation of modernity. Replacing the ancient traditions and the medieval dogmatism, the modern individual was nursed in the cradle of the Enlightenment and was influenced by the humanistic traditions as well by the Romanticism. Therefore, the individualism as ideology became the paradigm of the social organization from the 16th century on. However, its conceptualization was not linear, as the German sociologist Georg Simmel, who was an important influence for Elias' process sociology, described it through the two individualistic revolutions, the individualism of singleness and the individualism of uniqueness. The former dates back to the social contract and to the 18th century, being inspired by the Enlightenment and by the French Revolution ideals. On the individualism of singleness, individuals were considered as equivalent unities in face of the social as a whole. The individual had his singularity and freedom, but his individuality represented the archetype of the human race. On the contrary, the individualism of uniqueness was characteristic of the 19th century and valued the singularity and the uniqueness of the individual. It was shaped by the economic liberalism as well by the German romanticism. The second individualistic revolution cherishes affinities with the contemporary visions of individuals and its assumptions contributed to the creation of the idea of subjectivity as well to the emergence of psychoanalysis and also other psychotherapies. In interdependence with the individualism individualistic ideology which contributed to the development of Elias' ideas of homoclossus or the I deprived of the us, as well under the influence of secularism and capitalism, different contours between the private and the public realm have been reshaping the social organization of modernity. These shifts influenced the contemporary world and were captured by Hannah Arendt and Richard Sennett, who pointed to the deflation of the public life, revealing the lack of interest regarding issues of citizenship and political engagement. Hannah Arendt introduced the concept of vita activa to explore the elementary, elementary manifestations of the human condition, labor, work, and action, aiming to understand the alienation and the isolation in the contemporary public sphere. She revealed how in the polis of the ancient Greece, the balance between the different spheres of the vita activa, as well the divisions between the public and the private space were responsible for a grounded political thinking. However, modernity brought us a loss of the word, a word conceived as a coin. Th this is as something common to all that will transcend human mortality. In the contemporaneity, the labor based on the biological and on the natural needs of the animal labyrinths, as well as the work helms related to homo, faber abilities of manufacturing prevail emptying the manifest manifestations of collectivity, plurality, dialogue, and action, Zoom political. The absence of action, the only act activity for Arendt which depended on the presence of the others, ended up impoverishing the political sphere. Thus, without signs of transcendence, the political, the public sphere, and the koinon as a shared common war became impossible. On the other hand, Senate investigated the decline of the public life of modernity, pointing to the concomitant overestimation of the intimacy and the exacerbation of the values of private life. 
Due to this imbalance, the cult of the personality, the narcissistic culture, and the individualistic ideology played a fundamental role. Nowadays, the imbalances criticized by Elias, Arendt, and Senate increase it, and it's possible to observe the exacerbation of the individualism. The relationships and interactions or non-interactions of Mines generations were well portrayed by Lawrence Bain and Gold's fifth basic assumption. Indeed, free from the shackles of modernity, which in the past guaranteed protections, protection, individuals became unique, however uncertain, permanently precarious, liquid. One of the consequences of modernity was the, the disappearance of the pre-industrial, currently idealized experiences of communities, Gemeinschaft. Far from the idea of tightly woven communities in which biographies and bonds were continually and historically shared in the past, the current communities tend to its destructive features, to a destructive Gemeinschaft. The fear of annihilation observed in the frightened individuals of the globalized world hurled them to groupings, tribes, gangs, or groups in which homogeneity, tendency to fuzz, to fuse, merge, negative social psychic retreats, adhesive identifications, one as phenomena and in cohesion processes, mainly massification prevail. So the impossibility of a shared common life referred to homo clauses or at least a huge number of helpless individuals to the wariness of their selves. Their failure to cope with the high demands of the contemporary individualistic society is mirrored on the increase of diagnosis of depression and other disabling disorders, as well on the growing of a huge contingent of unemployed, precariats, and other co categories of worthless persons. The homo soccer and necropolitics. The 20th century has left a legacy of great wars, totalitarian regimes, and atrocities that bled the world on an unprecedented scale. Therefore, in the 21st century, unmourned traumas, as well as the figurations of transgenerational psychic transmissions, are being revealed to the constraints and restraints of the social unconscious in persons, groups, and societies. In addition, lately media have been presenting to the world the painful reality of masses of war refugees, homeless, unemployed, and persons living under the poverty line, not only in the so-called third world, but also in the heart of Europe. As citizens of the world, and group analysts, we are affected by the dreadful destiny of these human beings. Foucault's contributions on this disciplinary society, biopower, and biopolitics shaped some of the best Western contemporary critical thinking. One of his contributions revealed the ultimate expression of sovereignty resided in the power, biopower, to, do, to dictate who may live and who must die. However, as the philosophers Giorgio Agamben and the African Akai Akai Mambi pointed and view, this analysis in the 21st centuries, century needs to go further because we are witnessing the creation of zones of anomie, zones of exclusion beyond human rights in which death prevails over the right to live. These contributions are closely related to augmentation in the current political arena of states of exception, which challenged the locus of human beings in contemporary life. We are facing the proliferation of countless worthless individuals, the human sucker. The, the homo sucker in Latin, the sacred man or the accursed man, is an obscure figure from the ancient Roman law who was convicted of a crime and because of that was not considered pure and may not be offered in sacrifice as well. But if murdered, his killer does not become a murderer. Homo sacer's life is hence a worthless life and although sacred, is valueless. 
Agamemnon's concept of the homo sacer rests on a crucial distinction in Greek between the organic natural li life or bare life, zoe, and a qualified life, bios. The paradox embedded in the status of the de dehumanized bare life of the homo sacer, his sacredness as well as his availability to be killed is clear. Life should never be dispensable, but the horror as experienced in concentration camps or recently in, in the Guantanamo Bay prison reveals that life can be disposable according to sovereigns or nation states will. Building on Foucault and Agamben, but mo moving further through the observation of the destruction that recent wars and terror inflicted on populations, Bambi affirms that the figurations of contemporary forms of subjugation of life are not any more related to the sovereign right to decide who may live and who may die, the biopower. Contemporary Cruelty is indeed promoting the maximum destruction of persons, creating dead words and horrendous forms of social co coexistence. Bami points to the substitution of biopolitics by the necropolitics, that is, the necropower. Hence, within the scenario of the Negro power, the contemporary life has changed, and figurations between resistance and suicide, sacrifice and redemption, martyrdom and freedom shifted and were definitely blurred. Omnits a party and groups that flourish in leaking containers. The panorama seems apocalyptic, and we are witnessing through the helpless figures of Homo Colossus and Homo Sacer the rudeness of the individualistic paradigm in a deflated public space. Something might have happened with the discourse engendered by modernity, which valued inclusion, citizenship, and justice, because throughout the centuries, individualism brought isolation, narcissism, exclusion, and hopelessness. Elias noticed that shift, affirming that if in the 18th century the concept of individual used to describe the singularity of each unity referred to the whole, with time the notion end ended up designating the singularity of one unique person. Fortunately, folks, Elias and group analysis offered another possibility of coexistence in society. The social nature of persons, the importance of interpersonal and transpersonal phenomena, as well the co-constructed destinies, allowed not only new forms of belonging, but permitted a shift from, from a closet of individual homo clauses to a hominis, a party, open and mutu mutually interdependent persons. Nevertheless, this paradigmatic shift was not easy, and over the years, group analysis evolved, overcoming theoretical and clinical barriers, as well as producing self-reflection and new lines of investigations. Indeed, group work has always been connected to the social context and found development in times of crisis and war, times when ma matrices were disrupted, individuals were hopeless and social containers were leaking, times in which incohesion processes led to a longing for protection against threats of annihilation, as well as for co cohesion in groups. It was not by chance that group analysis developed during the 20th century, a century in which mass movements prevailed, thereby even being a product of a leaking count century struggling with traumatic large group processes, the small groups flourished, be perhaps because they worked as pièces de résistance, as antidotes against the social massification. In this regard, Fuchs' ideas of belonging to a small group conveyed the idea that it was possible not only to treat individuals in groups, but also reinforce the human bonds affected by totalitarian totalitarianisms. Hence, for decades, through conscious and unconscious and social unconscious interdependencies, the work with therapeutic group analytic stranger groups developed. However, since the 70s, research of large groups has been pointing to additional challenges in group analytic theory and technique. 
Nevertheless, it was necessary to arrive to the end of the Cold War to face a theoretical shift from cohesion to incohesion in groups, to understand that it was necessary to explore other realms. The fourth basic assumption theory ushered group analysis into the 21st century, break, breaking the chains of illusions and the islands of safety that belonging to therapeutic small groups represented, describing the cornerstones for the social psychodynamic understanding of groups. Therefore, to pay attention to incohesion processes is not only to realize the ubi ubiquity of traumatic experiences and an unco unconscious life of groups, but it's also to understand that to coexist in contemporary times means to belong to almost impossible groups, groups with leaking containers. The relevance of group analysis for 21st century is undeniable. However, the so-called pure work conveyed in group analytic groups seems not to be enough to cope with the saucers of suffering co-created in the current turbulent world. In fact, the considerations addressed by incohesion processes in groups, as well by the Marius Koinonian player, demand new forms of group analytic engagement, a radical, a social group analysis in the current depleted public sphere. They, requ they require action in errant terms. These would be psychosocial interventions in groups, projects like uh, such as reflective citizens, community groups, neighborhood groups, interventions, all fundamental to act and to resist in errant terms. Uh, as peaceful guerrillas or as new forms of active pa pacifism, applied group analysis can contribute to situations on which homo clauses and homo soccer figurations present their ugly face. It means that group analysis is essential to promote and restore citizenship to the private citizens living in the emptied public space. However, group analytic interventions outside the traditional settings suffer from criticism and require reflection and methodological adaptations that con complexify the tenets folks postulated for the group analytic total situation. In this direction, Nitzkan's discussion on the total situation as the, to as the social situation in its total dynamic, which could serve as a key to unlock the problems of applied group analysis, are relevant. His considerations point to an important dialogue between the classic and the radical group analysis, providing for both a common foundation matrix. In fact, what Nitzkan observed was that for Fuchs, the group analytic situation cannot be standardized, but is fairly well defined. So what Fuchs was advo advocating for was an uh, adaptive, pragmatic handling of the group setting. In his Goldstein reading of group analysis, Nitzkan affirms that the group analytic situation itself would, would appear to have developed by its very adaptation to various social situations in which the setting of the stranger group would be but one. Therefore, total situations are the basic epistemological principle that the directs all group analytic thinking. The flexibility of Foucaultian considerations on the total situation opened the door for an explored views on group analysis. Thereby, impossible groups are groups on which the vicissitudes of contemporaneity are co-constructing unpredictable and complex total situations. In parallel with the group and elite debate on total situation, psychoanalysis has been discussing as well the displacements that occur in the classic psychoanalytic situation. Contributions from the few theory through the Berenge couple as well, Blair's notion of enquadre frame became important for discussions on total situations and dynamic matrices. Weinberg's inspiring presentation displayed a myriad of examples of a creative group analyst who successfully experiment on unknown group analytic fields in which complex total situations interfered in the group processes. 
he is intrigued by the idea that in spite of leaking containers and Symes' unbounded settings, as for example in the Brazilian slum, groups can flourish. He pointed to the importance of the whole of the group conductor in the creation of a safe present, I may say transference, in a safe enough environment for the group, concluding that the success of these groups lies in the construction of a co-created fantasy in the mind of the group, including the conductor. His assertion could be translated as the importance of the internalization of the enquadre frame. It, this is a notion from Blair's. By the conductor and by the participants of the group analytic situation. Blagger's notion of frame goes beyond the Winnicottian setting, describing the totality of the phenomena included in the therapeutic relationship. It comprises the analyst role, the set of space, atmosphere, and time factors, and part of, as, and part of the technique as fees or interruptions. It involves the variables of the therapeutic processes, but also constraints the frame conceived as a known process. Depending on the analytic process, the frame changes from the mere background of a gestalt into a figure, that is to say, changes into a process. So it's through the ruptures and the discontinuities of the frame that becomes possible to trigger processes that could have remained in silence and notice in traditional analytic situations. Therefore, to Weinberg's in possible groups, it was possible to observe the relevance of in the internalization of the internal frame that allowed the blossoming of group matrices in spite of difficult total situations. This internalization is central for the holding and the handling of groups with leaking containers, with leaking boundaries, and is paramount for contemporary group analytic total situations, as well for the so-called applied group analysis. Indeed, experiences of applied group analysis are changing the classic theory to discover new forms of coping with overwhelming contents and are pushing that are pushing usual containers and blurring the traditional interplay between them. So contemporary total situations are pointing to complexifying dynamic matrices observed as fields in enlarged frames as presented by Weinberg. In this sense, the focus is moving beyond the fundamental social historical and binocular visions of here and now and there and then to, to, to three dimension figurations which are akin to Pichon Rivière's formulations about group processes as dialectic spirals, spirals. These perspectives promote interactions in an amplified spiraling field as an aspiraling matrix that could not be constricted, contained, enveloped on the more traditional thinking. The classic two-dimension movement of the group psychic envelope, once described by Anzier as a metaphor for the group boundary, is becoming too fragile to contain the multiple dimensions in action in dynamic field matrix of the contemporary applied group analysis. The novel group envelope needs to acquire flexibility in its mo movements of containing and releasing interactions and contents as hinges and folds. So instead of, of focusing on relevance of safe but rigid boundaries that might crack or leak, it's important to create group analytic situations with novel boundaries envelopes constituted by of foldings and hinges. They will allow, little by little, in a paradoxical relationship of continuity and discontinuity on the frontier of the private and public spheres, he knew it figurations in groups and in the society. Within this perspective, initiatives out of the scope of the institutionalized group analysis, but with internalized group analytic frames, will find theoretical inputs to create new methodologies to provide group work for commu communities, neighborhoods, and organizations. That is, to create in the confluence of inner outer space 
new fields matrices in which koinonian interactions, action, zoom political, of omnis a party could be housed. These initiatives will blur and perhaps with time break the barriers established during modernity between private and public spheres, revealing social and conscious dynamics that does not allow the establishment of relationships based on a more relational ethics. The group will reconnect citizens and their different voices becoming antidotes against the proliferations of groups or groupings which convey homoclausal constellations and massification processes on which the exclusion of homo sacer and the denial of the uncanny, of the otherness, prevail. The challenges for the homoclausals, the homo sacers, and for the omens a party of the 21st century is enormous. But for us as group analysts, it is impossible to ignore the otherness phase. The ethical commitment, the face epiphany inherited from Levinas' philosophy. It's perhaps an almost impossible task, but it might rejoin us with some of the individualism postulated by the social contract, which used to value the singularity of the individuals as archetypes of the human race. It will allow a dialogue in which the face of the other will reassure the importance of the acknowledgement of the recognition of the otherness in a co-constructed life in collectivity. In the company of so many known and unknown faces, I give the word back to Suan Horn. Obrigada. Thank you very much. <laughs>